Hi guys, look what June sent over. This is the Crane M2S, and this is the successor to the wildly popular Crane M2. June sent it over before the release date, which is today, because they know who's a big deal on YouTube. They're, should we send it to McKinnon? Now, send it over to Bennett at Camera Crisis. He knows what he's talking about. And you know what? I kind of do know a little bit about the Zhiyun gimbals. I have a Crane. I have a, a Smooth Q. I have the Crane M3, which I will talk about a little bit later in comparison. And now I have the Crane M2S in my hand. And I have to tell you, this is coming out at $269 for a base price. The USD, that is. And that is a no-brainer if you want a compact gimbal that uh, just slips into your camera bag, no problems. This thing can actually, it can hold full-frame lenses and full-frame cameras, APS-C cameras, APS-C lenses, Micro Four Thirds, uh, GoPros, phones, whatever you want, but you just have to make sure that it jives with the uh, gimbal itself. I will have in the description a list of available, uh, of compatible cameras and lenses that will work with this little gimbal here. And if your camera is not on that list with that lens combination that you want to use, then uh, I would maybe not do this gimbal. You can get away with some stuff, like the ZV-E10 and its uh, kit lens is not on the list, but I balance that just fine. And the intro that you saw in the beginning, that is the 24 millimeter G Master with the A7 III. And I got that to balance okay, And uh, but it didn't have full range of motion, you know? So the eyepiece was hitting the back. You can't do vortex mode or anything like that. But for the most part, I would say stick to that list and uh, then you're gonna get yourself a nice, cheap, easy to use gimbal, which is quite lightweight, 549 grams, very lightweight and easy to balance because all of the motors lock. So it is a, a joy to balance, if you can believe that. I used to hate balancing gimbals, but now with the locking motors, that is so great. It has a runtime of 10 hours on a single charge and it supports fast charging. So you can charge it all up in one hour and 41 minutes. It comes with a little phone mount as well if you want to use it as a phone gimbal. And it also, you can get this uh, handsome bag with it. It's an extra cost, it's in the combo package. But if you don't have a camera bag, you can fit your gimbal and a camera lens easily into this stylish man bag or lady bag bag. It also comes with a few cables so you can connect various cameras to the gimbal itself for charging or for some optional functionality. I will provide another document that lists the functionality of all the cameras uh, with the gimbal itself. And you can also provide power from the gimbal to many cameras with the USB cable, and that is also listed in that document that I'll provide you. The ZV-E10 is one of those cameras that can be powered, which is great to know that uh, the short life of the ZV-E10 battery can be mitigated greatly by just uh, keeping them on the gimbal here. The Xeon Play app goes along with this, and there is some functionality in the app as well to be able to use it remotely if you're not next to your gimbal. Uh, and also you can update the gimbal from the app itself, which is very convenient. And the gimbal works quite well. Here is some footage of me just walking next to my local park here. Luckily, there were no kids in the playground at the time, so I didn't look like a total weirdo. But as you can see, the footage comes out nice and smooth. I recommend you do the ninja walk. But I recommend you do that with any gimbal because a gimbal is a tool that will help you, but you also have to be a tool that helps that tool. Does that make any sense? And uh, here's a little example of the vortex mode. You know, you want to go all Alfred Hitchcock on people. Here you go. They're just try not to get sick like I did when I was editing this thing, spinning around like that. But what about us self-obsessed vloggers? Does it work for vlogging? Let's check it out. Okay, so now we're going to do a little vlog walk while someone has decided to turn on the loudest chainsaw in the world. This is a little harder to stabilize because I'm not doing a ninja walk. I'm trying to just walk like a normal human being through the park while I talk to my camera like a not normal human being. It's becoming the norm in 2022. Everybody's on YouTube these days, aren't they? So if you had a camera with no stabilization, like right now I have no stabilization on the ZV-E10 at all. A lot of you know that I like to use Catalyst Browse, but if you didn't want to go through that extra workflow and you wanted to keep your shutter speed at one over 50, then you could do something like this. Just get yourself a compact little gimbal take it around. Now I actually have this in all auto settings, so my shutter speed is actually 1 over 100 right now. That's what the camera has chosen. But uh, hey, when I'm out vlogging, 
is this a vlog when i'm out doing this stuff i just want the camera to do all the work so this is what it looks like what do you think huh looks beautiful and now let's try running so people think i'm a criminal stealing this gimbal here we go oh i'm so out of shape everything hurts why why am i doing this it's for you people is it smooth i hope it's smooth now wasn't that cool? And I only had a mild heart attack. If you press the trigger three times, the whole unit spins around and you are in selfie mode. I always love that about the Zhiyun gimbals. Find that super cool and handy. And I'll tell you what, there is one more feature. Let me see. Check this out. Let's say you don't have enough light on your gorgeous face. Well, watch this. Ah, see that? It has, uh, but we gotta take that outside. We gotta go out in the dark and see how that goes. Okay guys, what if you wanted to go outside for a night vlog? You know, like a psychopath. What would you do? Well, Zhiyun has you covered. Watch this, hold on a second. And, wow, wow, there you go. And this is just the first level. Adjust ZVE-10. There you go, I have it on all auto settings. So it's going to adjust to my level of brightness here. And uh, this lens is a little close, but hey, are you complaining? No, you're not. Watch this. It can go up higher. Just, whoa, another level. And another level. And another. Okay. All right. Adjust ZVE-10. So now I'm down to ISO 500, which is going to be plenty clean footage. If I had friends, they would also, you would be able to see them as well, but I don't. So uh, you're just stuck with me. Look at this. It lets you do the night vlogs. And did you know that you can change the color with these things here? Where are they? These things, little magnets that you can stick on the light. Let's see what it looks like. Moody, dramatic, blue. You know, it's like I'm in some kind of horror film. Horror film starring a very handsome man. What about now? One man's journey into Hades to put the devil in his place. Starring Mark Joseph Bennett. Gorgeous man on the hunt for Satan. Or what about one more blockbuster coming to a small screen near you? Mark Joseph Bennett goes in search of love, sits down by a campfire, and he finds the woman of his dreams, which is definitely his wife if she is watching this. But let's actually check out the vlogging capabilities of this here in the dark. I can't see anything other than what the Zhiyun is lighting up, so I may trip and die, but I get lots of views, and that's what counts. There is a universal plate that you can get with it that won't block the battery or the SD card for some of the Sony cameras and other cameras, but I'm fine with uh, the plate that it comes with because the universal plate is like $130. And that kind of eats away at the good value of uh, the M2S. And so plus, and it's a really sturdy locking mechanism. Look at that, see, here's a little V. You pull back on this thing, shove it in, ready to go. Very, very sturdy. Pull that back, press the red button, and you're out. And now let's talk about the recently released M3 for a little bit. As you can see, they are about the same height. This guy has more girth. He's uh, thicker, girth. That's a funny word. This this guy's a bit thicker and he's also uh, a better built. You know, you can just feel it when you pick it up. It has a nice rubber grip here, very solid, nice touch screen. There is a screen on this guy, which I like very much because it's nice to see a screen to tell you what mode you're in and to also let you do the auto calibration. Should have talked about that at the beginning, but basically you put the camera on, you turn it on and you press auto calibrate and then uh, the gimbal knows how much weight that the camera is, so uh, the motors can adjust. If it's a lightweight camera or a heavy camera, uh, it'll help you out. And this guy, of course, also has the auto calibration. But So this is a much more plasticky build, but it is lighter, 549 grams compared to 700 grams, and it's cheaper. $269 at launch, which is, by the way, the same price as the original M2 at launch, USD, which that is pretty cool. You know, years later, you don't jack up the price. Good on you, Jun. And uh, this guy here starts at $369 if you're just buying the base model itself. So now here's the thing. If you have an extra $100, I can't see why you wouldn't go with the M3. It just gives you more options. It's a lovely gimbal. Uh, but if you're looking to get a gimbal, a nice travel gimbal on a budget and your camera jives with the M2S, I mean, this guy is definitely, definitely a great option to go with. I really like the direction that June is going. It's just these nice travel friendly gimbals. I was never taking around gimbals before, always too bulky. I had to bring a separate bag. These guys, I just slip into the camera bag and I am ready to go. So uh, if you're out there so and you have an M2, this is definitely an easy choice. This is a great upgrade to the M2. 
And uh, if you were thinking about getting the M3, but you thought it was a little too expensive, then uh, here you go. Here's your solution right here once again. Thanks to June for sending over this gimbal and knowing who's the boss over here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. It was a lot of fun playing with this thing. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, ask a question if you got one, and I'll be sure to answer it. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye. What if I had just done my whole gimbal review using just the light itself? Oh my God, that is so bright. This is not a good idea. Can't see a thing.